Hi Ziggy, how you doing? Yeah, I'm good man, how are you doing? I'm very well, very well. My name is Wairi, I'm a, I'm a music producer from Kenya and a nice. reggae and dancehall artist as well. I'm a big fan nice. as well. Pleasure nice, to find you. Link. Yeah man, thank you. So before we start, I would love to teach you uh, a Swahili greeting. Yeah? Go on now. Mm. So uh, when I say uh, Mambo Vipi, you say Poa Sana. All so right. Mambo Vipi. Poa Sana. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, Mambo Vipi is like, what's up? And yeah. Poa Sana, yeah. Poa Sana is, I'm good. All right. That sounds, sounds good. good. So Mambo Vipi. Poa Sana. Wicked. Sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Yeah, so um, I had the privilege to uh, watch the film early on today. Oh, nice. Yes, uh, amazing production. Um, uh, so I have a few qu- questions for you. I just wanted to find out. I'm sure you probably had a, a major role when it, when it came to choosing or selecting the cast for the movie. What made you narrow down to Kingsley as your main character? What made you decide this is our guy? Yeah, well, Kingsley was the one who kind of kept our attention, you know, um, the magnetism. So we kind of feel like if you can hold my attention or make me focus and look on you yeah, and um, listen to what you say, then you have a really good chance of um, doing justice to our father. You know? So that was, a, that was a key, really, where if you can hold your attention, you know. Now, you did an amazing job with, with the role, definitely. Um, yeah. So um, next question. Um, through the years, um, reggae music has been very a very strong medium used to highlight critical social issues in society. Um, mm. Do you feel like in present times, the genre still has the same impact uh, that it did back back then during Gong's time? I mean, there's still music, songs um, that address all type of things, you know. Um, but it's a different generation and you know, I'm going to really expect for it to be the same as it was. You know, things have to change. But you still have artists out there who express themselves, express them experience that um, we can relate to and can can be uplifting to um, people all over the world. So yeah, it's still it's still all its all its original intention, you know. Um, so we still have that element to it. Yeah. All right. Um, have you ever felt any sort of pressure to fill your father's shoes? I see my father not as a burden or or something to say. Oh my gosh, can the shoes fit or whatever? But that's something <laughs> positive. Why? Some part of that that really help me out, you know. And I know we come, we help him out too, because we have to continue the legacy, continue um, bringing him to a new generation and helping to get the message out, you know. So is yeah. Oh, sounds good. Um, congratulations on, on all your success, yeah. all the Grammy awards and all the multiple awards won ah, through the years. Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I really admired uh, in the film is how they managed to capture the creative process of Gong when writing and composing music. Um, what lessons do you think can be learned by modern day artists in regards to this? <laughs> what them can learn through this, I mean, through the movie, I mean. What them say, what them say there with the writing. Um, well, I mean. Each individual to them own. I mean, you know, Bob inspired yeah. by what he's inspired by. But I think it comes from being inspired and being um connected to something spiritual and connected to something beyond your own ego. True. You know, so I feel like that was Bob's whole thing where, you know, it, the music is not about self-gratification or self-glorification. True. Um, and him write him song them based upon truth, truth and experience and true emotion. You know, I'm not try, wasn't trying to do anything fake. You know, just keep it real. All right. Um, so over the years, the, the, the dynamics of music consumption has changed through the years. Uh, in your opinion, when it comes yeah. to selling records, uh, what do you uh, what do you prefer, um, or what do you think is more profitable? Uh, do you uh, prefer selling? Uh, of physical products, okay, remember the LP generation, CDs and tapes, or uh, the streaming and, and subscription model? Because I'm sure you've been through both generations. Yeah, yeah we've been through it all. <laughs> yeah. We've been through it all. Um, 
No, no, no. Me like the well, I did always like vinyl, vinyl records. Um, yeah. I think there's something special about like owning a piece of art. You know, it's like you own a painting, you can own it digitally too. But the painting itself, if you have it itself, then it more. It's better for me if you have the painting more than you just have it on a screen. Definitely. So I always like the um, the physical element of, of having um, music and especially um, vinyl, the sound of vinyl. And um, it's something where you have to take care of. It's like, it's something where you have to cherish and take care of and, and make sure it keep good, you know? Um, so it, it, it really involved more than just listen to the music and then whatever you know it's something it, 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 as i must say it 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 makes you it make you have a different experience with the music when you have it in your hand because you have to take care right you know what i say yeah um but that i mean i don't like streaming i mean i love it all i love it all i love it all the streaming thing i mean it, it good too because you have a, you have a quicker access to the music than you would if you have a to and buy it so we love it all, man. All that we can live together. The different elements of music can exist, exist together without one of a be um, preferred over the other. But um, vinyl still exists, and we are put out a we are put out a live record later this year on, on vinyl. So oh, nice. um, you know, those who still have vinyl will be able to get it, and then it will be streaming too. So those who don't have it can stream it too. So we could do everything we can to forget the music out, whichever way it come out, you know. Nice, nice. I'm a big fan of your products, uh, especially the headphones. Loving the sounds. The House of Mali. Nice. Headphones. Yeah, the House of Mali headphones. Yeah, man. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so, I, I I know you're a family so good, man. I'm some environmentally conscious. Oh, yes. Yeah, environmentally. Yeah, big up on that. A friend of mine owns uh, the, the vinyl player as well. With the Bluetooth speakers. A good stuff. A good stuff, man. Good stuff with good intention. And made made with um made with um with a consciousness, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, great product. Um, so I so I I know your family, man. Um, has any of your children shown signs or interest uh, of choosing their dad's uh, career path, uh, music, and is it something you would uh, encourage them to get into? Yeah, well, my oldest son Daniel, him, him do music. He have a own style and one way to express himself. Daniel Bambata Marley in, in the music. Um, but the other ones, them, them, the other ones, them, um, my daughter, Zuri, she is a DJ. She like DJ okay. and she, she sing too. Nice. And then we have Justice, my three, these are my three oldest ones. Justice, she into fashion design and, but her fashion design is, um, it's called More Justice and it's a very conscious oriented, um, fashion with, you know, which bring out a message through fashion. My other four kids, them young, still one in college, and yeah. the rest is in um, one in high school, and the rest is in like elementary school. So, yeah, as long as them is good human beings, is really what is important to me. Them not for the music, but them have to be good people upon earth, you know, and treat people with respect. You know, that is the real legacy. It's not music; it's how you are as a human being. So, that is what I am focused on. You know, for make sure them is good people upon earth. You know. Okay, great. There's two shout shout outs I love love you to make of, of two of your biggest fans in Nairobi. Hey. Yeah, in Kenya. So yeah. there's Zoe yeah. and Kintu. They yep. would love to get a shout out from you. Zoe and Kintu. Yeah. Yo, hear up Zoe and Kintu. No respect and love to the family and the Kenyan people. Yeah, they, they actually have have a copy of your book. Uh, uh, music music is in everything. So they have fans right there. Oh, nice for the kids! In... Oh, That's beautiful, pretty. beautiful! Yeah, man, yeah. I love that. And then, and, and now, yeah. this guy is, is one of your major, uh, who's your dad's major fan. He's called Victor Malumbe, and he actually named his son Nesta. Victor Malumbe, yeah, man. Yeah, Yo, man, Victor, so... what's going on? Yeah, man, brother, love, love and respect, same way, you know. And, and Nesta, I... to send love to Nesta to for there amazing amazing thank you so much my brother it's been such a pleasure hosting you yeah man no, uh, it's, i'm a big fan and it's a great honor man i'm looking forward hopefully one of these uh fine yeah, days man. to link up definitely i was privileged to work with one of your brothers yeah man, by the for way real, for real thank you who that julia i i featured uh, on his next project so 
Good job. Hopefully, look out for that. Oh, nice, nice. Now, what's yeah. your name again? Wiry. My name is Wiry. Wiry. Yes. W Y R E. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All so right. Check cool. it out when you get it. Come and check you out. Appreciate Bye. it, man. But bless yeah, up, man. Um, uh, uh, give thanks and respect. Bless. Yeah, man. One love. One love, Kenya. Love Blessings, you. man. Respect.